Hello, Pastor Steve Waldron here today. I want to talk to us about the English Standard Version of the Bible. Now, we're not going to do a full-throated critique today, but I saw something interesting at the doctor's office a few months ago. They had a Gideon's Bible. I'm always interested in Gideon's Bibles. I, I just like them. And they always used received text Bibles or majority text Bibles, either the King James or the New King James, which, of course, I would be a big King James guy. Well, I open it, and it's the English Standard Version. I was like, wow. Now, I know Leland Reichert, the general editor, the literary editor, excuse me, of the English Standard Version, paid great homage to the King James and said, we've got to come out with the Bible based on Alexandrian manuscripts that has the same cadence as the King James Version, and that's one reason the ESV is, is so popular. And uh, it's not as, as popular as some other Bibles, but it's extremely popular, put out by Crossway Publishing, the guys who did Frank Peretti's books, This Present Darkness, and all of this. And so I began to look. I said, well, I'm just going to go over here to uh, Matthew 12 and see if it leaves out the same scriptures like the Revised Standard Version did. The Revised Standard Version, the United Pentecostal Church came out against it. Uh, it back in the 1950s, almost all conservatives did. Uh, the UPC at the General Conference had their Bible colleges get together to do a play against it. Uh, they had several pages in a Pentecostal Herald showing why they're against it, on and on and so forth, and came out with a position paper. So the ESV is based on the Revised Standard Version, same faulty manuscripts, just trying to update the language a little bit. Lo and behold, there in Matthew 12, 41, I think it is, the scripture that in uh, the Alexandrian text is removed, Nestle's Island, 27th, 28th edition, 26th edition, it's there. And I'm like, well, that is amazing. So then I said, well, I wonder if Matthew 17, 21 is missing. This kind cometh not out but by prayer and fasting. Sure enough, it's there. And then Matthew 18, 11, I'm like, was that there? Well, you know, the Son of Man's come to seek and save that which was lost. It's there. And I'm like, well, it's, how about Matthew 23, 14? About what do you scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you, you know, rob widows' houses and all this kind of stuff. It's there. And I'm like, wow. You know, Mark 9, 44 and 46, it's there. So I, I said, uh, this is amazing. They've come out with the ESV and they've reinserted all these verses that they've taken out of the regular ESV. So I read in the front of this Gideon's ESV that... Uh, they, the Gideons had a special edition of the ESV made that reinserted all these verses because they feel like they should be there, you know. So, now let's look at this. Either they're supposed to be there or they're not. If you add to the Word of God, plagues are going to be added to you. If they're not supposed to be there, then you just did terrible things against God. But if they are supposed to be there and you took them out, well, then your name's going to be taken out of the Lamb's Book of Life because you're messing with God's words. So we have to think God preserved his word. I just wanted to make people aware that there's a Gideon's ESV out there, a Gideon's ESV, that uh, reinserts some of those, those passages. It's still got way so much wrong with it. I would run from it. I wouldn't use it as your primary Bible translation, even though it does try to maintain some of the majesty of the King James Version of the Bible. So... It shows some of the confusion in the uh, kind of the churchianity world, the secular Christianity world on the Bible. That they like, well, we, we, you know, a lot of people won't accept this Bible, these verses missing, so to use it, we better put some back in. Uh, the New American Standard Version did the same thing when their co founder began to teach seminars about how he felt like he had done things against God, that they gradually, they had six different updates where they gradually reinserted different uh, verses and parts of verses back into the Bible and they did it kind of stealthily till you get to the NASBU 1996 the NASBU update edition Lawrence Vance done a masterful job Metzger quotes him as an authority on the subject showing the different editions of the NAS, NASBU like the Christian uh, Holman Bible, I think they left them in, but they really didn't want to leave them in kind of thing. And uh, man, just believe the whole Bible. Believe the book. God has preserved it for you today. Well, to rejoice in it and thank God for it. Don't try to change it. In Jesus' name.